Hello everybody, thank you for joining us. Today we are going to do a quick Rodin the Thinker sketch and in this we are basically doing some anatomy and we're doing some form whereby it's a famous uh, sculpture where the man is sitting in deep thought. So the idea is to start off like this so that looks like two wheels and an arc and that is what it is one line like that oval right there so that is really a leg and by contrast if I take that as the bottom of the torso the other leg would be around here somewhere and you could do that so those are the two legs. He is sitting on some kind of surface. I do not recall exactly what it is, but now the key here is that his arm is not resting on this leg. So his arm is resting on this leg, so he's a bit contorted or turned. And there's the arm. And then just put in an oval like that because his hand is turning inward like that. Under, right under his chin. His other hand is around here, right on the knee, with some foreshortening probably in the back. We'll have to do that. So the other arm would be like this. The other shoulder would be around about there, which won't be visible. And the head will be right around there, somewhere resting on the hand. And there's the line that will determine the angle of the face. And so eyes, nose, the mouth is hidden just above that hand. So there we are. That is the basic form that we're working with when it comes to this guy. So I'm going to grab a, or a, a deeper pencil there and then we'll start sketching him out. So the back, now if you Google the images, this guy's sketch is an essential practice in anatomy. So again, I'm not following any particular detail here. I'm just going by the basic form that he is. There's the heel, there's the calf in front, and there's the knee. There's the muscular structure right there for that leg. And I'll even, we'll do the feet right after this. So you could do that much and leave it there. We're going according to whatever is in the foreground first. Just let me have a look. The recording is going, okay, good. And we go on to the shoulders and the arms and there we are so those are the that is the upper arm the forearms should be somewhere around there there's the elbow and i have made a little error there because i mentioned that that elbow is particularly visibly resting on that knee so i'm going to get a portion of that knee in very light because we have a hand also going over it and I do know that his legs are so much apart that they that you can see the other leg placed clearly and there we are now you could rest this elbow right about here go in like that I'll take that off I almost made that same mistake which I wanted to avoid and now that elbow is on that knee and definitely on not on this one so we will distance this out a little more if we have to and we will momentarily do some shadow effect that will put that directly 
on the leg. So right now we're going to do this hand. So it's curled inward and I know that his finger, his index finger is sticking out. And then he has his thumb which is also actually sticking out pretty much. So it's either sticking right out or it's bent at a certain angle but it will appear somewhat like that. So there we have the index finger, we have that bent arm. I know that he has some definition in the delts, he has some definition in the latissimus, he has some skin folds, realistic skin folds here. I know that he has some serratus here, in the muscles here, and he has a part of those lats going backward like that and part of the abs showing like that. So we move on to this hand now. So this hand has to rest on the knee and I would recommend one, two, three, four and just go along that guideline. Take one finger at a time and Again, I would recommend taking your time in this. So his hand goes around like that. Part of the forearm will be behind there. I'm going to clean this up so you can see it a little better. And there we have him. So let's put down, let's give this guy a face. I'm going to keep him fairly generic right now. Now we'll start here because the challenge is that is mouth is compressed against the top of the hand so there is his neck there is his eye and right with that eye I know that I went down a little bit from here because I again we only lay guidelines and we change as we go along so there is the other part of the mouth there is the face and here is the remainder so make sure that you just line up the ear somewhere around here now if he has to I do not remember if he has hair but if he does just put in some kind of hair and you should be off to the races I know that he has some definition right there because because of his very evident musculature. He has a tricep right there, some bicep flowing like this, forearm definition and there we are almost done. So the this oh I forgot the feet. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So bigger to small bigger to smaller and you could do this one first or that one it doesn't matter you could google some images for toes because toes are like hands some unique structures usually they stick out like that but again i do not know if this particular sculpt had it along those lines i'm not sure but it would be close if not exactly the same and there we have the thinkers sculpt all ready to go that is the quick sketch of the anatomy and the layout we will be doing this guy from different angles it'll be a lot of fun it's an essential practice in human anatomy I know that some of the proportions right here are not exactly as I would want them because again I'm sketching him out in that pose to show how we can quickly go about it and we can of course make all the fixes uh, once we have the primary sketch down so please do uh, let us have your comments on if you have any other suggestions in doing this guy or how to even do him uh, to show him show a better rendition 
So <clears throat> now that we have the sketch done, I'm going to just add some quick, fast details just to show how the anatomy on this beautifully done piece of art shines through. Now I'm actually talking about the actual sculpture itself. I am only doing it so much justice by merely mentioning it. I can never do it the same justice in terms of how striking it still looks after all this time. So the light source coming downward we will have as you see shadows falling along along those lines so certain areas will be more illuminated Than others. So. so, as you see, that I'm just quickly again, if I were to do this as a true work of art in terms of rendering it on paper. I would have taken far more, far longer to do justice to it. But this is again, even with this shading thrown in, it's still an essential sketch. So harder areas here, we will deal with those in a second. But around the musculature the, and the anatomy, the shades will, the mid-tones, let's say will be along these lines of course if you wish you could add toenails and features to highlight different aspects on his feet but that is up to you So with our core medium shading already thrown in, I will now quickly just take a slightly thicker pencil and put in more fill in details wherever they belong and again it is all essentially a quick sketch in spite of all these let's call them let's call it shading or the inks that I'm throwing it so more intense dark in the areas that are away from the light right here here some right here and a perfect example of that blend is right here because right under him immediate dark and then it actually traverses into a lighter shade as the muscle definitions on the outside come into play because those are more directly 
or closer to the source of light. Bit of a fill right here around the delts. This a little more intense. And there we have it. As for the hair, I'm not exactly sure. But I prefer to leave him bald for the sake of for the sake of making it more interesting. But this is okay. I chose to go with that hair. And of course if he was let me smudge that out, please. If he was sitting on, and I forgot that area, that is definitely an intense dark. So if you're sitting on this, let's say that I'm looking at it from a certain angle, he would, of course, cast a direct shadow depending on the surface. Now I'm presuming that this was a rock, but I'm going to make it mostly flat because again this is essentially not the practice of we are not practicing putting the rock together we are practicing putting this guy together he's just perched on this and I will assume that most of this is flat so I'm just putting in some flat inks right around where his anatomy rests or is likely to cast a shadow but for the sake of a bit of clarity if it is a rock so you have to just check out the exact surface and then put in the details they might be lighter on one end they might be darker in another because the rocks have like ridges and curves and cracks so it will be different according to the surface of the rock and that's it so there is the thinker, quickly done anatomy. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe and keep in touch. Have yourself a wonderful day.